Multivariable Calculus Section 13.9 Part 3 Change of Variables in Triple Integrals and here we have a picture of a sphere showing spherical coordinates rho, phi, and theta and at the end of the video we're going to have an example in spherical um, coordinates because actually this is uh, the most useful way to use a change of variables um, in triple integrals. Okay, so let's review change of variables in two dimensions. Given dA is dx dy, if x is uh, given as a function of u and v and y is given as a second function of u and v, then the needed Jacobian is as follows. On the left there we have the shorthand notation, and on the right is how we evaluate the determinant for that Jacobian, where we have the partial derivatives of x across the top and partial derivatives of y across the bottom. So another way to view the change from dA equal dx dy to dA equal r dr d theta is to use this change of variables idea where u and v are r and theta. And so uh, we tend to forget that extra r, and so here's another way of looking at this so that uh, you'll see why the r is necessary. So um, to go from a rectangular to polar, these are our formulas for x and y, and so our Jacobian then um, is with respect to r and theta, not with respect to u and v, because these are the two variables we're changing to. And our derivatives of x, first with respect to r is cosine theta, and with respect to theta is negative r sine theta, and then on the bottom row, our partial derivatives of y, first with respect to r is sine theta, and secondly with respect to um, theta is r cosine theta. So then to evaluate the determinant, we do our multiplication, cosine theta times r cosine theta minus sine theta times negative r sine theta, so that comes out positively, and we can factor an r out then, and cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So that's our Jacobian, that's another way to realize why you need that r. So dA equals dx dy, which equals the Jacobian times dr d theta, and then the Jacobian is r. So now we'll look at uh, change of variables in three dimensions. dv is equal to dx dy dz, which is the product of the three changes along the three uh, axes. And if we want to change variables to u, v, and w in three dimensions, then we need a Jacobian. What does the Jacobian in 3D look like? Well, given our three functions, this time for x, y, and z in terms of u, v, and w, the Jacobian is similar to the 2D Jacobian, except now it's a 3 by 3 determinant instead of a 2 by 2 determinant. Notice that we still have partial derivatives of x along the first row and partial derivatives of y along the second row, and then the third row are the partial derivatives with respect, uh, with respect to u, v, and w for z. And so, as you can see, in four dimensions, five dimensions, and so on, this determinant would get bigger and bigger, and the computations would be, would be huge. And so we would probably need software to help us, to, uh, a computer to do it for us. Now, polar change of variables was just two variables, and the cylindrical change of variables is still only two variables because z just stays the same. But now the question is, a spherical change of variables, you would have three new variables, rho, phi, and theta. And so we're going to use this Jacobian for a specific case where we are looking at the Jacobian for changing from rectangular three-dimensional coordinate system to the spherical three-dimensional um, coordinate system. So now let's look at change of variables from x, y, z into spherical variables. Here are the equations from a previous chapter for converting x, y, and z into spherical coordinates. And so u, v, and w in this change of variables are rho, phi, and theta. And here's our Jacobian. First row are the partial derivatives of x, second row partial derivatives of y, and the third row partial derivatives of z in the set order rho, phi, and theta. So computing those partial derivatives, here's our determinant. Notice that the first entry is just the coefficient of rho in the x formula, 
and the last entry for example is 0 because there is no theta in the z equation. Now this determinant looks quite daunting but let me tell you that after we finish doing the computation it's going to simplify beautifully so let's continue and see what happens. There's the Jacobian, the 3 by 3 determinant to evaluate that the, the fast way. The shortcut way is to copy the first two columns. Now you can break it down by minors if you wish, but and you would have to do that in uh, four dimensions or higher. But um, I think I would want some computer software to help me at that point. Okay, so we're going to multiply down the diagonals, and that first one is zero. And then we multiply down the next diagonal, and we get rho squared cosine squared phi cosine theta sine phi. Now don't get discouraged. This is all going to simplify very nicely thanks to Pythagoras. And then the next uh, downward um, diagonal gives us rho squared sine cubed phi sine squared theta. And now we're going to multiply up the diagonal. And remember, we're going to subtract that one. We subtract the ones as we go up. So the negative is going to disappear, and that's going to be plus rho squared sine squared theta cosine squared phi sine phi. And then the next upward one, again, it has a negative, but we're subtracting it. So that becomes plus rho squared sine cubed phi cosine squared theta. And the final diagonal is 0. OK, so now let's look at some like terms. These two are like terms in that we can factor out rho squared sine cubed phi. And then what have you got? Well, you've got sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, and that's just 1. So those two terms simplify to rho squared sine cubed phi. And the other two are like terms in that you can factor out the rho squared and the, what else, sine phi and the cosine squared phi as well. So you factor all that out, and what's left are the cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, which is 1. So that simplifies to rho squared cosine squared phi sine phi. Now we're almost done. We can now factor out rho squared sine phi and look what's left in the parentheses, another Pythagorean identity. And so the whole kit and caboodle simplifies to rho squared sine phi. And that's our Jacobian for changing from xyz to rho phi theta. So now we have dv is dx dy dz equals a Jacobian times d rho d phi, d phi d theta. Well, that's a mouthful. And so the Jacobian replaces um, the word Jacobian, rho squared sine phi. And that's what we need when we change from um, x, y, and z coordinates to spherical coordinates in a triple integral. So now we're going to look at a very simple example. And uh, then if you ever need to do a more complicated one, you'll have the tools you need. Just to show you, this really does work. Compute the volume of the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals a squared with a triple integral in spherical coordinates. Now we already know that this volume should be what? If the radius is a, what's the volume of the sphere? Well, it's 4 thirds pi a cubed. So we're going to show that the triple integral does give us the correct answer. So here's the top half of the sphere, a generic sphere here. And remember that theta goes all the way around the circle from 0 to 2 pi. Phi is measured downward from the z-axis. So from the top of the sphere down to the bottom of the sphere, phi is going to grow from 0 to pi. And then rho is going to come out from the origin to the, um, to the sphere itself. So rho is going to go from 0 to a. So here's our generic uh, triple integral for volume. If we uh, integrate. Um, along x, y, and z and integrate the function 1, then that returns volume, if you'll remember. And so now we have to change that into an iterated integral in terms of uh, rho, phi, and theta. So again, uh, theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, phi goes from 0 to pi, and uh, rho goes from 0 to a. We have our 1 for volume, we have our Jacobian, rho squared sine phi, and then we have our d rho d phi d theta. So integrating with respect to rho, we get 1 third rho cubed. We keep the sine phi, and we're going to evaluate rho from 0 to a. So now we have our integrand as 1 third a cubed sine phi 
integrating with respect to phi, we keep our uh, one-third a cubed, but the antiderivative of sine phi then is going to be negative cosine phi, and we evaluate that from 0 to pi, which gives us um, uh, negative one-third a cubed times the quantity negative 1 minus 1. So we get a, a negative 2 times that negative 1. So that gives us 2 thirds a cubed d theta. And when we integrate that, we get 2 thirds a cubed times 2 pi. And voila, we get the correct answer for the volume of the sphere. So this has just been a, an introduction to uh, changing to other variables when you're dealing with a triple integral, which your text did not really go into very much. And so down the road, you might find this useful. So now I leave you with evidently some new Rubik's cubes that have just come out with not spherical, but circular spinning dials. If you get some of these and know how to solve them, write me a letter.